Hi, uh, good afternoon. So uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about some work that we did at Flickr uh, to essentially serve image faster and bring a, a good user experience to our users. So I'm just going to have uh, one slide that talks about the Flickr product, uh, which is what is Flickr. And Flickr is basically an application to uh, upload, organize, and share your photos. Um, so what you need to know about everything that I'm going to be uh, saying next is that we have a lot of photos. And the other piece of it is that uh, some people, uh, a lot of people who use Flickr uh, sh use Flickr to share um, high quality photos. It's uh, like it has a big photographer community. Um, so they care that their content looks good. So let me now talk about uh, building delightful uh, user experience. So in the context of Flickr, uh, what that means, uh, it means building a great product uh, with great content. And so we do have great content uh, on Flickr. I mentioned that we had a, a lot of great photos. So a lot of people take a lot of great photos what we need to do for them uh, is to show uh, those photos to the users with high fidelity. So that's uh, my talk was called Fast and Beautiful. That's the beautiful part. Um, the fast part is that we know that users like when applications are fast. Uh, we know that user engage, uh, users engage um, in, uh, in applications that uh, are really snappy. So that's uh, the problem that we're trying to solve, uh, keeping things beautiful and making it fast. So this is all very high level, and uh, I'm talking about the product fairly abstractly. Uh, let me put my uh, technologist uh, hat on and uh, be a little more specific about uh, what this is. So I'm, going to, I'm saying that I'm going to be a little more specific, but I'm going to start by talking about beautiful and telling you that beautiful is very subjective. So for example, here we have a picture of a cat. And you may like the picture of the cat, or you may not like the picture of the cat. But what we are talking about here is when I serve uh, this picture, will users think, oh, uh, there was a, uh, it, it was well rendered, it looked good on my screen, or it did not, not look good on my screen. And so we do a lot of uh, tests with different levels of compression, different formats. At the end of the day, uh, how do we know whether a user is going to say, hey, this looks good, or no, it doesn't? So the way we uh, did this is that uh, we created a game. Uh, and we show this to a number of people who um, have high expectations, photographers. And we show them two pictures. And we ask them, are those photos, uh, are those images identical or not? And they vote. And sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they don't. But that allows us to tell whether somebody can detect that we've done something to the photo or not. So this is how we take something which is uh, very subjective and try to get from the user a measure of whether uh, they feel uh, that we're doing the right thing or not. So that's beautiful. Uh, again, uh, somewhat subjective. Let me talk about something which is far less uh, subjective, which is fast. So if I tell you, hey, uh, you need to make your application fast, you're going to start thinking about a lot of different things. And you're going to be starting to think, all right, are my API responses uh, coming fast? Um, in this case, photo serving, uh, am I serving photos fast? 
when I want to render a screen or a page uh, on the web, how fast is, are all the, the elements showing up? If I scroll, what is the frame rate? How smooth is the, is the scrolling? Um, if a user taps on a profile, how fast does the, um, does the profile of a user show up? What I'm getting at is that when you say we need to make things fast, there are lots of different levels and lots of ways to look at this. Uh, some are very uh, tiny at the, on the server side, and others are at the other end of the spectrum measuring the user interaction. Uh, a user does an action and something happens. So we have a number of challenges, though, uh, as we embark on this journey. Uh, the first one is that the world has changed uh, in the past few years a lot in lots of different ways. Um, the first thing that I wanted to point out is that designs are a lot more immersive. So what do I mean by uh, design are a lot more immersive? So this is a search uh, for Grace Potter, and it was in 2009, uh, six years ago. You can see that the images, the thumbnails, are pretty small. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of white space here. And now you do the same search in 2015, and it looks like this. You see that the photos, like this photo is the same as this one. Um, they are bigger. There's far less white space here. So we've, we are now in a world where uh, we are trying to use every bit of uh, space we have on the screen to show some content and make the, the, uh, the experience very immersive to the user. But what that means is that every pixel, every pixel on the screen needs to get a photo or something like that. So we need to return a whole lot more pixels. The other challenge is that the screens are now much bigger. So these are two phones that were recently released. Uh, their resolution is uh, 2,500 by uh, 1,400, give or take, quad HD. That's a lot of pixels. And if you look, this is how the screens, uh, the screen sizes have evolved over time. Um, this is the quad HD right here. You can see that it's much bigger than what some others that we had before. But you can also see that as we're talking about 4K, 4K is there. And Quad HD is actually quote unquote small compared to 4K. So the number of pixels that we need to draw and the size of the objects that we need to send keeps increasing. One thing which is not getting uh, necessarily a ton better uh, is the network uh, and the network bandwidth. This is a graph of um, the uh, average connection speed in Asia uh, at the end of last year. So I'm assuming that right now it's slightly higher. But um, the interesting part here is that you can see that roughly speaking, four megabit per second uh, is a kind of normal, I'd say, even though in some other places uh, it's much lower. And at four megabit per second, uh, it takes four to eight seconds to uh, transmit a 4K image. So there's a lot of, uh, of challenges to solve here. So this is the equation. Um, we have lots of pixels. We have limited bandwidth. We want to serve a lot of data as fast as possible. And also, from a user perspective, uh, the expectations are very high, and they've never been higher. So I've talked about uh, a lot of uh, uh, aspects of the problem. Let's go and talk about the solutions to this. So, the first thing uh, that we need to do is basically instrument. 
Um, I was talking about fast, and fast meaning a lot of things uh, at a lot of different uh, layers. Um, so what we did is made sure that we had data for all those different measurements. So if you look again end-to-end uh, -end between the user and the server, um, you need data about what's happening on the server. The device is going to make a number of requests to the server. So we made sure that we had timings for all those requests so that we know which request was taking which uh, how much time. Then at the device level, uh, for example, if you want to render a feed, there's going to be a number of requests happening. So um, we made sure that we had the instrumentation for these groups of requests so that, again, we'd have a uh, numbers that we could look at. And finally, I gave the example of a user hitting on a profile page, uh, a profile, an icon, and getting the profile page. Um, we also made sure that we had some instrumentation so that we could measure um, all of this. So if you do all this, what do you get? Well you get a lot of data points. Uh, this is a, an actual graph. I don't remember uh, uh, what I uh, represented here. But you can see uh, that there's a lot of data points. And the next, uh, uh, the next step was to analyze all this. And analyzing uh, is going to take quite a, a lot of, uh, of time, because you need to look at the worst case, the average case, the best case. You need to look at people who have a good connection, people who have a bad connection. Uh, looking at things geographically is very important. Things could be uh, very fast uh, in South Korea, but very slow uh, in Singapore or in Japan. Uh, it could be. Uh, fast in South Korea, but for some reason, slow in Seoul. So we actually looked at this data uh, by country, by city, uh, knowing where our users were. We looked at download time, render time, first byte, last byte. You can spend a lot of time on all those uh, graphs, uh, but you get a lot of, uh, a lot of insights. So let me, I started talking about, um, when I talked about FAST, I started talking about uh, the API latency, how fast we were uh, serving an image. Let's start looking at the, the server. I mean, there's a lot of uh, developers in the room today. They write code. They like their code to go fast. What we realized, um, and, and it's not surprising, is that slowness uh, creeps in over time. So when somebody wrote some code, they obviously tried to make the code go fast. Uh, and they most likely had some uh, fast code at some point. But then the code was written, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago. Lots of people did a, a little bit of a tweaks here and there. And so. Um, some things kind of uh, slowed down one way or another. Um, also, if you look at code that has been uh, running for a few years, the hardware changed a lot. And so some optimizations that you had made years ago uh, don't apply necessarily to the new generation of hardware. So you're going to find uh, some things that you can, uh, some opportunities to speed things up. And one of the lessons that we learned through this is that as soon as you stop paying attention to, um, uh, to graphs like, hey, how fast is this request being, uh, uh, being processed, things start uh, slowing down because you're not paying attention anymore. So we, uh, we did some work uh, on the server side, uh, and we found some uh, some places where we could speed things up uh, pretty significantly. 
Uh, but uh, we were a little disappointed by the results. And uh, let me explain why. So you have a client, you have a server. In this case, let's say that my client is in South Korea and my server uh, is on uh, the west coast of the US. Uh, and it's, this is not atypical uh, for uh, internet services. So that's about 160 milliseconds to go uh, back and forth between here and the US. In order to uh, get some data in this uh, uh, age where everything is HTTPS, you're going to need to do an SSL handshake. You're going to be sending an HTTP request. The server is going to do some server-side processing. And then some data is going to be sent back. So the problem is that with that kind of latency, by the time the server receives uh, uh, the request, there's already been uh, more than half a second that was spent just setting things up on the network. So you can make the server very fast, but all the improvements that you're going to get on the server, uh, the user is not going to see the same amount. So here's uh, an example. Um, we, uh, we found a, a place where we could really optimize things uh, on photo serving. And we saw about 15 to 40 uh, percent speed improvements. And when we started looking at uh, what users in Brazil were seeing, we were seeing improvements of 5 to 10 percent. So we were still very happy about the improvements on the server because it means that your server can process more requests. Uh, the, the load is lower. I mean, there's lots of benefits to making things faster. But from a user perspective, uh, like the, the benefits are much lower. So let's take a, a step back, because we made the server fast. It was good, but we didn't gain uh, as much as we thought. So where do we spend time when we get uh, photos and videos, like big files? So this is the same, uh, 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 the same uh, sequence as I was just describing. You set up the connection and send a request. The server does some processing. And then the response is being transferred by to the client. So as we just said, the server processing ends up being uh, somewhat of a small amount. Uh, and because we are ser sending images, uh, and those images are pretty big, uh, the response time, uh, the transfer time, is pretty uh, large. So here is a, 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 good, uh, a good place to start uh, having a look uh, next. So a question that we can uh, reasonably ask is, can we send less bytes? So an image is basically a squared, uh, a, a rectangle, x by y pixels. And it's being encoded in a certain format. And there are a number of formats uh, that you can do this in. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of different formats and how they compare and their support. Um, for uh, the purpose of this talk, I'll just say we take those x by y pixels and we compress in order to get a, a small file. And when you compress, um, typically for photos, uh, you do this in a lossy way, uh, meaning that uh, you're going to lose a little bit of information. And so what you're going to be getting back when you display the image may not be exactly what you had uh, at the beginning. So let me uh, give you a, an illustration of this. This is a photo uh, from Flickr today. Uh, this is a. Uh, the uh, width here is uh, 2,048 pixels. And so if you zoom in uh, right here, this is a, an image which is about uh, 600 pixels. And you can see, uh, and I hope you can see 
are projected. You can see a little bit of noise around the um, around the leaf here, uh, but it overall looks good. Um, and th this noise is typical from uh, JPEG encryption, uh, so that's uh, not uh, anything uh, unusual here. I can actually make this uh, encode this photo. Uh, in a much more aggressive way, compress it, and have the image be much smaller. And so this is a 85 kilobyte representation of the same image. And you don't see it maybe as well as, uh, as on my screen, uh, but you can see that there's a lot more noise around uh, those areas of high contrast. Also, um, JPEG encodes by blocks. And you can start seeing those blocks. There's one here. There's one there. So back to the, the game uh, at the beginning with the taste test. If you were to put the 600 kilobyte photo next to the 85 kilobyte photo, and you ask the user, are those photos identical or are they different? There's a very high chance that the user is going to say they are different because there's going to be so much noise that this is going to be very visible. So we are trying to avoid all this noise, um, but we're still trying to shrink the photo as much as possible. So it turns out, uh, which is good news, is that uh, we made quite a lot of progress um, in terms of image encoding and formats, and nowadays, uh, I know that those numbers are a little bit abstract, but compared to what you were able to do a few years back, you can actually almost, for the same visual perception, get files that are about half the size of what they used to. So that's great news. Um, that means that we can now send half the bytes that we used to send a few years back. The drawback here is that it's expensive. So sometimes you'll want to do on-the-fly resizing of photos, but if you start doing on-the-fly resizing, uh, that type of optimization uh, is not going to work because it's just going to be too slow. So what do we do? We take an original and we do some very good compression and in a way that those photos still look good and uh, we generate uh, a large one, a medium one, and a small one. Um, and that's a, a good start to be able to uh, serve those photos uh, in a number of places on a user screen. So it turns out that back to serving things fast, the uh, long time that we were spending to send a a lot of bytes, we can actually uh, make the number of bytes that we're sending smaller. And so we're expecting that we're going to be able to serve the images faster. So this is a test that I did uh, uh, from Singapore, downloading a photo from the US. It turns out that I tried to download the 360 kilobytes uh, photo. Um, and it took 3.7 seconds. And then right after this, I tried a 120 kilobyte photo, which is a third of it. And it still took 2.9 seconds. So what we are seeing here is that it's good to make things smaller. Uh, but it turns out that there's another limiting factor. Here's another way to look at it, uh, and this is um, from Ilya Grigoric. Uh, this graph here shows uh, for an entire page how fast can you load the page. And uh, the variable here is uh, the bandwidth that the client has. So obviously, uh, the more bandwidth you have, the faster uh, the, the page is going to load. What you realize is that it 
goes much, it goes fast, uh, faster, sorry, as the bandwidth increases, but pretty quickly things reach a, a floor and you can't, whether you have uh, four megabit per second or eight megabit per second, things are not significantly uh, different. So the piece of the equation that uh, we're missing here is the latency. How far are you from uh, the, uh, the server? And this is back to setting up the connection and also uh, a number of TCP uh, slow start and a number of other things like this. What you see is that the closer you are to the server, the faster you're going to be able uh, to get content. And <clears throat> this is pretty linear, as you see. Uh, 240 milliseconds, you get a four second. You go 100 milliseconds, it's two seconds. So it's very linear. So the lesson here is one way we can really speed things up is by reducing uh, the round trip time, how far the client is from the server. So let's, like a, uh, let's have a look at this problem for Flickr. We have a user uh, in, uh, in Korea, and this user has photos. So we can store those photos in Korea and serve them in Korea. The problem that Flickr has is that um, if you think about Facebook, for example, where you follow your friends and the content uh, that you're likely going to see is content that your friends have posted, and your friends are likely to live around where you live. So if you host the content where the user is, there's a good chance that the content is going to be close to the user's friend and things are going to be fast. In the case of Flickr, um, there's a community aspect around photography, and I'm not necessarily following my friend. Maybe I like cars, and I'm following somebody who takes good photos of cars. Or I like sceneries, uh, and I'm following somebody who takes great pictures of sceneries. And even if I live in Korea, uh, there is uh, no guarantee that the person that I'm following lives anywhere close. So it may be that the photos that I'm interested in are all, over, all around the world. So it's a, it's a little tricky in the case of Flickr uh, because we have basically a, an interest-based graph. It is very hard uh, to bring the content close to the user or at least predict what content uh, will be uh, um, interesting to a particular user. So given that it's hard to replicate globally 15 billion images, um, we're doing something that uh, isn't going to be uh, super surprising, is that we use regional caches uh, so that we can keep a copy um, of, the, of the image closer to the user. Um, it's a little bit like uh, a CDN uh, in the sense that uh, we are trying to put caches and entry points as close to the user as possible. Um, but CDNs, uh, and there, it's a, a little bit of a caveat here, uh, typically have uh, last recently used uh, heuristics, whereas here, because it's uh, user-generated content, um, we need to have a slightly different uh, caching algorithm. So let's have a look at the, uh, what happens if you do this. Uh, this is a actual graph. Uh, this was this is showing the time to load the photo in Australia, and Australia is uh, pretty far from a lot of uh, of other places, and especially if you have content in the U.S., Australia is very far from the U.S. network-wise. And we added the regional cache uh, in Australia uh, back in 2014. And as we did this thing, uh, the time to load a photo almost dropped by uh, 50%. So you can see that 
bringing the content close to the user has uh, a huge impact here. So let me have a look at where we are here. We made the server faster. We looked at the photos and without visually um, degrading the quality, uh, we made the, the size of the files uh, as, sm as small as possible. And then with caches, we tried to bring the content as close as possible to the user. So you get a lot of benefits out of this. Um, I said about 50% uh, or 50% uh, improvement. Back to my uh, slide about the many ways to look at this. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a hand wavy uh, explanation because it depends for whom uh, and in which conditions. Uh, but the question is, we've done this and can we do even better? So it turns out that the answer is yes. And I've talked a lot about the infrastructure and the back end. And it turns out that um, the client is the best place to make things faster. So let me give you an example. Um, this is a user uh, that did a search. And let's say that uh, this user is going to uh, choose to view uh, the picture which is in the middle. So they are bringing up this photo. And the question is, what are they going to do next? So maybe they're going to go back to um, the list of results, uh, which we already have, because we already displayed this. Or they're going to go uh, to the next result. That's pretty likely. Or maybe they're going to go to the previous result, which is also fairly likely. And so you can see that the client has all the context uh, to guess what the user is going to be. And by guessing what the user is going to be, uh, be able to uh, like get some data in advance and do some prefetching. So making the client smart is actually uh, the biggest uh, improvement that we found uh, we could do. So what does that mean, making the clients smart? That means using a local cache so that if you have fetched a piece of content and you're likely to use it again, you are not going to go and fetch it again. That means using some opportunistic, opportunistic prefetching. So based on the context, knowing what the user may, is likely to do and getting this data so that when the user does it, it's already there and it looks instantaneous. And if you do this, what we found out is that you could get up uh, between 50 and 70 percent uh, gains in certain regions. Um, it's not a lot of magic. Uh, it's more a lot of cheating. Uh, it's uh, pretending that we're going to do something when we've already done it. So one caveat here is that um, all those things, uh, we shouldn't do them uh, too aggressively. If you have too large a cache, people are going to complain that your app is taking too much space. Uh, if you do too much prefetching, say um, somebody looks at an image and you prefetch the next three and the uh, um, previous three, that means that for one image that the user sees, you're going to fetch seven images. People who uh, have a limited bandwidth every month are uh, are going to hate you because your app is going to use a ton of bandwidth. Uh, the other problem is that when the user does something that you hadn't planned, you're going to start competing with some prefetching requests, and that's actually going to slow down your app. So there's a lot of a, a tweaking to do in order to find the right balance here, uh, but there's a lot of gains. So. The takeaways uh, is that uh, we, did, uh, we did this work and we got a lot out of it. Uh, and it's an exciting balancing act. Uh, I encourage everybody to, uh, I mean, speed is a feature, uh, 
uh, users really favor um, apps uh, that are fast. And so embarking on this journey uh, is a useful one. Um, in order to get there, it's a lot of measurement, some experimentation to find the right uh, solution for your app. And again, looking at all layers of the stack because there's improvements to be made everywhere.